In this tutorial, we'll implement multiple themes using the Stacked Themes package. Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial for multiple theme management. This tutorial will use the latest developed Stacked Themes package. If you want to follow along, you can download the starting code from the website fullstacks.com. We'll be moving through this tutorial quite quick, so make sure to open up the written tutorial on fullstacks.com so you can follow along at your own pace. Once you have downloaded and extracted the code, you can open up the pubspec.yaml file where we will add the stacked underscore themes package and we'll use version 0.1.0. And if you're watching this video in a few days from when it was released, make sure that you have the latest version by going over to pub.dev and checking out the stack themes package. Once you've added the package, you can open up the main file and change the return value of the main function to a future and mark it as a sync. The stack themes package uses a theme manager, so we have to initialize that theme manager before we start using the package. Then we'll make use of the theme builder widget and we'll wrap our material app in this theme builder. The theme builder expects a builder property. This is a function that returns to us the build context. Then it returns to us the regular theme, a dark theme, and a theme mode. These values we will supply to the material app. The regular theme will be set as the theme for the material app. The dark theme will be passed to the dark theme property of the material app. And the same goes for the theme mode. And that's all the setup needed to use the theme builder. Let's move on to using multiple themes. The theme builder has a property called themes which expects a list of theme data. Theme data objects when constructed can become quite large. So my suggestion is that you move your list of themes out of the main file and keep it in a separate file. Head over to your UI folder or your root lib folder and create a new file called theme setup. This file will contain one function called get themes and it will return a list of theme data. This is where you will construct multiple theme data objects inside this list and provide the theme that you would like it to have. You can make the readability even better by creating a private getter for each of the theme data functions and naming it accordingly. For our case, we'll simply create themes inline in the getThemes function because we won't have a very elaborate theme that we'll be supplying. For this tutorial, we'll only supply the background color as well as an accent color. For the first theme, we'll make it blue for the background color and the accent color will be set to yellow. Then you can duplicate that five times and choose whichever colors you want. I'm just gonna choose some random colors which will match the titles that we have in one of the UIs that I've already built. The second theme will set to white and green. Third one purple green. The fourth one will make black and red. And the last one we will make red and blue. Then you can open up the main file and for the themes property, we will supply the get themes function call. Now, if you open up the multiple themes view, you will see inside that we have a gesture detector on each of the theme items with an on tap function that's empty. In this function, we will get the theme manager and pass in the context, and then we'll call the select theme at index function and pass in the index of that theme data. The theme manager will be available in all of the UI files if you call get theme manager and pass in the context. Visual Studio Code didn't want to run my project through the debugger, and so I'll just use the terminal to run the code for now. And if you run the app now, you'll see that you have five buttons that you can tap through, which will change the background color. One thing that I wanted to add for this functionality is to change the status bar color as well, if you want to change it. To do this, you can supply a function to the status bar color builder, which gives you the theme. And then you can select from that theme, which color to return for your status bar color. We will return the accent color of the theme as our status bar color. When you perform a hot reload, you will see that if you tap one of these buttons now, the status bar color will match the theme color that was passed into the accent color value. And to make use of a theme, it works the same as a normal Flutter theme, and you call theme.ofContext, which will give you the theme. 
then you can use that theme object to set your background color or your accent color depending on what you want to use just to give you some more context on what this multiple themes view model looks like it's just a list of theme models which is a class that has an index and a title and I just generate five items so that I can show you guys how to swap between different themes. The next thing to tackle is dark and light themes. To use the dark and light theme functionality, the theme builder supplies you with a default theme mode property. This takes in one of three theme modes, light, dark, or system. System won't be displayed in this tutorial because I couldn't launch my API 29 emulator I kept getting a blue screen crash when I tried to. Then for the actual themes, you can supply a dark theme, which takes a theme data object. You have to set your brightness to dark to indicate that it is a dark theme. We'll set the background color to blue 800 and the accent color to yellow 800. Then you can also supply a light theme, which will also be the default theme depending on your system value or whether you've supplied a default theme mode. For the light theme, we'll have to set the brightness to light, the background color to blue 300, and the accent color to yellow 300. Make sure that your home value is set to dark light view. When you run the app now, you will see that it starts up with a light blue background and a light yellow status bar color. Since we can't test the system functionality in this emulator, we'll simply do the dark and light toggle functionality. You can open up the dark light view file and in the gesture detectors on tap, you can get the theme manager and then call the toggle dark light theme function. Once you reload the application, if you tap on the text, you will see that the app swaps between a dark and a light theme. The theme manager has built-in persistence using the shared preferences package. So whichever theme you have selected last, the next time you launch the app, it will be the same theme that gets passed down to your material app. The theme manager can be used within any parts of the UI, but if you do want to call this functionality from your view models, which can happen, there is a theme service as well. And to use that theme service, you simply have to register it with your locator as a singleton by calling theme service dot get instance and passing that to your register singleton function. Then you can go to the view model that you'd like to use your theme service in and you can get it from the locator using the theme service type. And just to complete the example, you can open up the multiple themes view file and remove the on tap function that we wrote and instead call an anonymous function that calls the set theme function on the model and passes the theme data to it. Once you've generated that function, you can change the return type to void and then you can call select theme at index and pass in theme data dot index to the function. This performs the exact same function call on the theme manager through the theme service. If you look at the theme service interface, you have select theme at index, a theme count, an is dark mode property as well as a toggle dark and light mode. If you change the view in the main file back to multiple themes view and remove the light and dark functionality and replace it with a get themes function call. When you run the app now and you tap on either of the buttons, you will see it still performs the exact same functionality as we are using the theme service instead of the theme manager now. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and like this video and I will see you guys next week.